as you could tell this morning, we truly are better together. Sitting there listening to us sing, oh, you know how good heaven's going to be. When we sing like that together all the time, I don't know if I can do that concept of better together justice. What a great concept that God designed his church for us. There's a country artist right now that has a song out and the song is called Better Together. And it starts like this. A 40 HP Johnson on a flat bottom metal boat. Coke cans and BB gun. Barbed wire and old fence post. Eight point bucks in autumn and freshly cut corn fields. One arm out the window and one hand on the wheel. Some things just go better together and probably always will, like a hot cup of coffee and a morning sunrise. I got to thinking about that concept of things that are better together. You may think of things like peanut butter and jelly, unless you're abnormal, and you may say peanut butter and honey, which is awesome also, but not as good as peanut butter and jelly. What about Tuesdays and tacos, right? Taco Tuesday for a reason. Or my favorite as I was reading down one of the lists, chopsticks. Think about it for a minute. If you only have one, you're only going to spear your food. What about a nap on a rainy day? What about a long kiss after an I do? God and his people. And obviously exhibited this morning, God's church. Together. All over the world this morning. His church is meeting. In homes. In buildings. Maybe even in the backyard. Maybe some in peaceful areas like we are. Maybe some that aren't so peaceful this morning. But God's church is better together. Together in spirit. Together in mind. Together in worship. Worshiping the same God together as a family. With God as our father. God's church is better together. And when we think about his church, we must understand that it's not the building we're gathered in. It's not the pews we warm or the computer screen we're sitting in front of, but it's the people. The people are the church. The people is who's better together, and we could be better together in this building or outside of this building. But the point is the same in which we're better together. Maybe it's the morning phone call that you always have with a brother or a sister. Better together. Maybe it's the pen pal that one of our teens has sparked up with one of our seniors. Better together. Maybe it's the meal you bring to one of our shut-ins. Better together. When we think about the value of the church, it's people that we're connected with on a soul level. It's more than just your local fraternity. It's more than your Kiwanis or your Lions Club or your VFW. It's deeper than that. And it's bound together with the greatest binding force of nature. And that's the blood of Christ. Truly, we're better together. What a blessing the church is to each of us. As you reflect on your life, think about the moments in your life when you were outside of the church. Maybe times of being away from family. How alone those moments were. Think about those rough weeks. That things just don't seem to be going well. Maybe it's stress. Maybe it's anxiety. 
and you get the phone call from your brother or sister or the text or you go and open up the mail and there's the card from your sister. I had a birthday not too long ago and I got a card. I tell you what, birthdays give me anxiety these days. I get all these text messages and I have to feel like I have to respond to all of them. But I go get uh, my mail and there's a card from Miss Betty Switzer in there. And as I opened that card, I could see her face. I can hear her voice. Because I know her and she's my sister. Yes, age separates us. But God's love and Christ's blood brings us together. The church is better together. As we've been speaking about this spiritual man, as we make the distinction of the church, how it is a relationship that's built on more than just community. How it's a relationship built on more than just proximity. How it's a relationship built on more than just the fact that you may associate with 2855 Broadway. But it's a relationship that runs deeper, that's spiritually based. Knowing that the love that you have that resides in you in the spirit is the same as each one has. Those who were obedient to faith and they were washed clean by the waters of baptism and given that gift of the Holy Spirit, that spiritual man is better together. And as last week we spoke about this spiritual man from Galatians chapter 5 and what the spiritual man looks like and how the spiritual man functions and, and how the spiritual man is led. And we look at this idea of the fruits of the spiritual man. Those ideas like love and joy, peace and patience and kindness and goodness, those are the things that make the church better together. Because as we look around this morning, yeah, we have differences of ages, differences of opinions, differences of ideas, differences of looks. We are all bound together by the same fruits of the Spirit. Fruits in which you don't find typically in the world. The love that the Spirit gives is only found from God's Spirit. The peace, the joy, the gentleness, the self-control, the kindness, the goodness only comes from that joy we have from the fruit that the Spirit gives us. We are better together. The spiritual man is better together. And I like to look at this idea a little closer from a couple different points this morning. We just sang a song. We shall assemble. Jed and I get together all week long and we try to hash out worship. And I know some of you may take for granted what happens Sunday morning, what Jed does. Don't take it for granted. The man thinks about all ways of how to wrap worship into a thought to spiritually guide our minds it's just not picking songs out. So we sat and we were figuring out a song to sing before the lesson. We came up with, We Shall Assemble. I want you to be reminded of the words we just sang. We shall assemble. We bring an offering. We sing the song of the redeemed. We shall bow down on bended knee. We sing the song of victory. You notice the binding agent there? The we? We need each other. You can go on and look at several examples of, of how people need each other. You may have heard of the illustration of the newborn baby being left alone. You may think of the animal kingdom even how they need each other, how they rally around the weak. Therefore, I want to propose this morning how the spiritual man is better together through Galatians chapter 6. Number one, the spiritual man is better together because we restore in a spirit of gentleness. We've all been there, right? We've all been in a place in our lives where we need to be restored. 
Maybe it's a transgression we're going through, and that's what Paul is getting at here. He says, brothers, in chapter 6 and verse 1, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual or the spiritual man should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. That idea of restoring is the same word we see when they're mending their nets in Matthew chapter 4. They're fixing the problem. They're, they're, they're seeing what's going on and they, they fix it. They restore it. If you've seen uh, these shows or maybe on DIY channel where they restore old furniture, they take something that's broken down and they restore it. They fix it. Do we need restoration? Absolutely. But I love it's not just the fact of restoring, but it's the fact of restoring with gentleness. You think about an old part. You think about maybe old plastic that you need to put back together and how brittle it is, and you have to handle it with care and intricacy. Do it gently. And you restore the relationship. You restore the right way it was. Maybe it's a brother or a sister who's fallen away. Yes, that can happen. Fallen away and they find themselves worldly living and and you go to them. Restoring in a spirit of gentleness is restoring with one arm around their shoulder. Restoring in a spirit of gentleness is soft-spoken, carefully chosen words. Restoring in a spirit of gentleness is exhibiting love. Why? Because we understand what the wages of sin are. We understand that we must be restored. This idea of meekness has a basis in agape love. This love that cannot come across as harsh punishment. Why do we struggle with improper restoration? If you think about that idea, is it because maybe we're in the shoes of saying, I'm glad it's them and not me? Do we do it maybe to make ourselves look better? But we're better together. Therefore, we're better together here and we're going to be better together there. Therefore, when we look around the room and we see sin, when we see a brother or sister in a bad place, we should want to go to them kindly and to restore them in this spirit of gentleness. We need that from each other. We should desire that from each other. We should be in a relationship with one another that says, I need you. To help me get through this. And he continues in that thought. As we continue through the text. He says restore one another. In a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself. Lest you too be tempted. Which brings us to the next point. Not only should we restore. In a spirit of gentleness. But we bear. With one another's burden. We bear with each other. Literally to bring relief. Two, think about when you bear with something. Maybe it's somebody walking up the staircase with a heavy box and you offer to take half of it or to offer to take all of it. Maybe it's a brother or a sister that you see crying and you cry with them. You know, sometimes I have the fault of always wanting to fix it. Maybe the best fix I can do is what? Simply listening. Letting them dump on me. Letting them uh, say everything that needs to be said without maybe even a solution granted, but an idea of just listening to one another. When we bear with one another, we hurt with each other. When we bear with one another, we cry with each other. When we bear with one another, we pray with one another. We offer help, maybe spiritually. Maybe it's an accountability partner. Maybe it's praying with them. 
Maybe instead of saying, I'll pray for you, praying with them. Maybe even on the phone. I know sometimes our tradition has got us in a weird place when it comes to prayer. But if you've ever had somebody, after you telling them their problem, they stop and they pray with you on the phone, that's powerful. Maybe it's sharing encouraging Bible verses. A lot of you know Leo. Every Sunday morning I get a text message from Leo. Scripture. Encouraging me as a fellow preacher. Bearing with one another. Encouraging one another. Maybe it's not only spiritually, maybe it's financially. Maybe we bear with one another financially. Maybe we help out when we can. He says, as you have the opportunity, maybe covering cost of bills is something you can do. Surprising them with a gas card. Right now, that would go a long way, or not go a long way, maybe. What about bringing them dinner? Whatever we can do, if we look around this room, we have to learn that we're better together just not on Sunday morning. That we're better together all week long. That we're better together when we have communication with one another. We're better together when we bear with one another's burdens. Maybe it's family. I know personally moving to a place without immediate family can be difficult sometimes. Who's going to watch the kids? Who's going to take care of the dogs? There's other burdens we can bear and help with one another. But most importantly, looking around and seeing a brother or sister and bearing with their burden spiritually. As Paul continues down through this text, we must understand that we all struggle. We all have burdens to bear. We must understand that we always can look And help each other out. And whatever that help may be. This last week. Melanie hurt her finger. We didn't know what was going on. But before long. Wendell Wright said. Hey bring her over to the office on Monday. And I'll look at it. We brought her over. And he fixed her all up. Gave her a little splint. And sent her on her way. Had lunch with Monty this week. Just somebody caring. Dan comes into my office all the time. He reads me like a book. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not. I'm fortunate. I get to work with a bunch of really awesome people. But I get to worship with a whole bunch more. And I get to live in a place that I've never lived before in my life with a bunch of family. I told class this morning... Moving from Wyoming to Kentucky was easy because I moved to family. I don't understand how anybody could do it in a corporate world. Pick up and leave a place and move to a different place without a church family. We are so blessed when we're together. We're so blessed with what God has designed for us. Paul continues and gives us one more reason. I believe we're better together. He says in verse 9 of Galatians chapter 6. He says, and let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap. If we do not give up. So then, he says, as we have opportunity. Do good to everyone. And especially to those who are in the household of faith. Obviously, the doing good there is what we've talked about. Restoring one another in a spirit of gentleness. Bearing with one another. But it's not limited only to those things. Doing good to one another. As we see this concept in Matthew. Chapter 5 and verse 16. He says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God. Do good to everyone. What does that look like for you? Fill in the blank. 
Maybe doing good to uh, the person next to you when it, it's your office or the office next to you is it, kindly giving them a kind word. Being forgiving, understanding, doing good to one another. We just look at this idea of doing good, but then the idea consistently shows us when he says, especially to those in the household of faith. Do good to one another. Exhibit the kindness. Loving. Paul Overstreet sings a song, Love helps those who cannot help themselves. Do we do good to one another? Are we meeting each other with kind words, with a smile? Do we see when somebody's broken down and hurting? Do we go and we give them a hug and check on them? Do we check in on our shut-in? Those people who are of us, do we do good? In all of these things, we must focus on two main concepts. Positive and purposeful interaction. Think about that idea of positive interaction. You know, you remember Thumper on the old Bambi movie? What did Thumper's mom always say? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I'm going to tell you what. Some of us just keep them out shut sometimes. But we could have positive interaction. Positive interaction that's made for building up, for encouraging, for edification. Yes, I know things come across our brains. Things come across my brain all the time. That's why my mom told me to have a speed bump installed between my brain and my mouth. Because sometimes things come out that aren't. I shouldn't say it. But positive interaction. And positive interaction comes in many different forms. All of you in here know Scott Taylor. I love Scott Taylor. He's a big old dude. And I like to roughhouse with him. And I know some of you have seen Scott and I roughhousing a little bit. And some of you have even got on me for roughhousing with Scott. You're going to knock somebody over. Hopefully it's Scott I'm knocking over. But what that is is two brothers who love each other, positively interacting with one another. And both of us know that. Positive interaction. But not only positive interactions, but purposeful interaction. Purposefully commenting. Purposefully encouraging purposefully checking up on one another, purposefully living our lives, being better together. When we see the idea of iron sharpens iron, it's positive, purposeful interaction. It's the encouragement that we need each and every day. I love the idea in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and then he says it again in chapter 5, where where Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica, and he's telling them about the coming of the Lord, and he says this, encourage one another with these words. Why? Because this world is hard sometimes. Encourage one another. Positive, purposeful encouragement. Listen, I know this world's hard, but guess what? God's coming back. You know what kind of change that would make in your day sometime to hear that from a brother or sister? You know what kind of change that would make in somebody's day when you gave them that positive, purposeful encouragement? Do you know that it is valuable to do it face-to-face, but it also is valuable via text message, phone call, and a card in the mail? Positive purposeful interactions with one another. You see, we're pretty complex. I'm starting to realize, uh, I guess maybe the older I get, the more complex we are. You know, you think you have people figured out. I remember when I first got here, I remember thinking I had Stan Allen figured out. I don't ever have Stan Allen figured out. but I'm going to keep trying. But because I can't 
and don't have him figured out. Sometimes I don't know what's going on in his life. I don't know what kind of day he's had, if it was good or bad. But if I keep my interactions with you positive and purposeful, it's always going to make a difference. In a good day or a bad day. I try to figure my wife out. Dan's easy. She tries to figure me out. Sometimes we say things to one another not realizing what spark that was going to light. But if we can remember positive and purposeful, it's always going to light the right fire. We are better together as a church. We are better together as a family. We are connected on a soul level. And that makes us powerful. The world looks at the church that God created and says, you can't compete with it. We are so bl- grateful, we're so blessed, we're so, it's amazing how we are. But my encouragement to you this morning is to remember that we're better together. Do not allow our church family to become out of sight and out of mind. But consistently check in with one another. And let's grow together as a body. In 2022, let's start growing as a family. Because we truly understand we're better together. My invitation this morning goes something like this. Maybe it's time for you to reconnect. Maybe it's time for you to realize, and maybe you already have, that you said, man, I've been disconnected. There's been a lot going on. Maybe it's time to reconnect. Maybe it's time to reunite. Maybe it's time to re-energize. A lot of us have gone through a lot of things lately, and it's been tough. But I want us to look around this morning and realize who we are. In just a minute, we're going to go down and do something we haven't gotten to do in a long time. We get to eat together again. I hope you take advantage of that. I hope you take advantage of the opportunity to call somebody this week, to reconnect with a brother or sister, to check on them, to send them a card, to bring them a meal. Maybe it's the phone call that says, hey, can we bring you a meal? Maybe instead, hey, we're bringing you a meal. And we love you. I hope this year will be a year that we realize and we grow better together. Let's pray. God, we're thankful for your church. We're thankful for the people that you surround us with. Father, we're so thankful that we can be together in more ways than just face to face. Father, help us to realize the blessing we have in your body. Father, help us to reconnect with one another. Help us to learn one another. Help us to encourage one another. And Father, help us to strive to get each other to heaven. We pray all these things through your son's name. Amen. If you have a need this morning, maybe it is a step in the direction. Maybe it is a confession of sin. Maybe it is a repentance. Maybe it's the morning where you realize that you need to reconnect with this body. Whatever your need may be, now's the time. Why together we stand and why we sing.